In this tutorial, the 8-pin PIC12 F1572 will be programmed to switch on an LED will be programmed to switch on an LED connected to pin 5 RA2, set up as a general purpose I.O. or GPIO, using both the Picket 4 and Snap programmers. The tutorial starts off using assembly first, and then C, which has two parts. The C code is done in bare metal, also known as register programming, and then using the MPLAB MCC to generate device configuration code sections to which we add the code for switching LED connected to pin 5 RA2 on. First, some basic info for beginners. Breadboard connection points are internally connected in the following way. The transparent green line indicates the internally connected points for column 1, row A to E. The lower rows, F to J, indicated by the second transparent line, are also internally connected but separated from A to E by the center division of the breadboard. If a PIC12 F1572 device is installed in the following position, the red pin BDD is connected to all connections A to E, and so too is the orange pin VSS connected to all the connections F to J of column 1. For the rest of the device pins, and any electronic components added to the breadboard, the same applies as indicated by the transparent vertical lines here. The positive power rail is internally connected horizontally as indicated by the transparent line, but the top and the bottom rows are not internally connected. The upper and lower positive power rails can be connected to share the same voltage levels but can be left separate for different voltage levels if required. The negative power rail is connected in the same way as the positive rail. An LED has a longer leg called the anode and is the positive connection. The shorter leg called the cathode is negative. This is the symbol used in these tutorials with colors related to polarity indicated. Another feature is the flattened edge on the side of the cathode. For this first part of this tutorial, the LED will be connected with the negative cathode leg to pin 5 RA2. This can be done using available positions on the green transparent line below RA2, as seen on 4H, and the positive leg can be connected to any point of the green transparent line yeah, on 5H. There is also a current limiting resistor of 1 kilo ohm connected from 5J in series with the positive power rail. With the LED connected in this way, the PIC device can turn on the LED by completing the connection from resistor through LED to ground via its internal device connections. This is known as syncing. So if pin RA2 is high, or A1, then the LED will remain off, and only if the device pin RA2 switches to ground or zero will the LED be turned on. The PIC device pins, color coded, and programmer connections can now be completed, including the required 10 to 50 kilo ohm resistor before the device is powered up. The Picket 4 can be configured to power the device for programming and debugging, or used with an external power supply to breadboard. In this case, the PIC kit 4 is then set up to detect the external supply. Both PIC kit 4 programmer setups externally powered and powering the circuit will be covered. The SNAP programmer requires external power to breadboard and this setup is covered too. We will now look at creating a new project using the MPLAB XIDE and we will start by using IDE version 5.05 .05, allowing us to begin with an assembly project. If your installation version of MPLAB XIDE has the MPASM assembler installed then proceed. If not, 
check out the MPLAB X IDE installation tutorial software installations. Ensure the Picket 4 or Snap programmer is connected via an available USB port. Then run MPLAB X IDE version 5.05. The programmer is found message should be displayed if the drivers are installed correctly. To start, a new project must be created. Select File, New Project from the menu or select New Project Icon. Then select Microchip Embedded and Standalone Project. Then Next. Now type the part of the device name. In this case 1572 will bring up the option to select PIC12 F1572 and then click Next. Select the tool from the Hardware Tools window. If your programmer is found message was displayed when opening MPLAB XIDE, then the Hardware Tool window will display your device to select Now. Then click Next. From the Compiler Toolchains window, select MPASM version 5.81 if using MPLAB XIDE version 5.05. For other IDE versions, select an available MPASM version, but be aware that there may be issues to resolve if not using the version 5.05, or rather just use the 5.05 used in our tutorials. Then click Next. Give the project name. Here we can use PIC 12 F1572 LED on Sync. A project location can be selected on the hard drive if the default location is not suitable. Then click Finish. The new project is now created. The Projects window has a folder with a name given to the project and some default subfolders are created. In the lower window, the Projects dashboard has additional information such as the programmer assigned to this project. A source file needs to be created. From the Projects window, select the Source Files folder, right-click, and from New, scroll to the Assembly File ASM option. Click to create the first file. Give a name for the new assembly file. Name it LED underscore on underscore sync for this tutorial. Then click Finish. This file is now added under the Source Files folder in the Projects window. If double clicked on, this new file will open up in the Editors window on the right as displayed here. PIC devices have configuration words which need to be set up as required for each application. Use the Window menu tab to scroll down to Target Memory Views, then to Configuration Bits to open. For the breadboard tutorials, no external oscillator is required, as the use of the device's internal oscillator will be used. The Configuration Bits window has an option column for each of the fields of the configuration words. These fields are comprised of various numbers of bits of a configuration word. The individual bits within these fields are used to enable or disable PIC device functions. Config1 is found at address 8007 and Config2 at address 8008. By default all bits are 1. Therefore the configuration words address register's default value are double F double F hexadecimal. When referring to the device configuration, Section 4 of the PIC12 F1572 data sheet the register definitions for the configuration words has details needed to select to suit a specific application. To select the internal oscillator for our breadboard tutorial, the FOSC field option will need to be changed from the default ECH to INT OSC using the Options drop down menu. The default bit values of config1 are indicated by all the set bits 1. In the top row here. The R, P and U letters are for readable, programmable and unimplemented bits. When the FOSC field option is changed to INT OSC, 
the value of config1 register changes from double F double F to double F FC, which confirms bits 0 and 1 are now read as 0, which matches the value of the F OSC field when selected for int OSC, and the rest of the bits are default values of 1. This is the only change to the default configuration bits required for this tutorial. Below the configuration bits window is a generate source code button. Click on to generate the code for the configuration bits modifications made above. The output config bits source window has the generated source code, which can be selected and copied, then pasted into the created assembly source file. Control C copies text once selected with mouse. Ensure all highlighted text is selected correctly, including colons. Click inside the LED underscore on underscore sync assembly file window. Then use Control V for pasting the copied source code. Now let us discuss some details of the pasted source code. Comments are ignored by the compiler and start with a semicolon. The editor turns them green. These comments can be added for information purposes, explaining parts of the lines of code to assist later on when code is being debugged. The two default comments above can be left for now being purely information. The directive pan include adds code from another file during compilation before being processed into machine code and loaded into a PIC device. In this case, a device file that defines the registers also known as register files and details of the PIC microcontroller we are using. In this case, p12f1572.inc. Note that these include file names vary between compilers used by different versions of MPLAB X IDEs. These files are located on your computer. A search for p12f1572 will allow the file to be opened by a text program for review but that will come later. The next two comments are related to config1 and the value of the word as generated, being hexadecimal FFFC, which is the equivalent of quadruple one, quadruple one, quadruple one, double one, double zero binary. The bits zero and one being double zero, matching the option of int osc for field option. The double underscore config instruction defines configuration words 1 and 2 for the PIC device, which control PIC operation. We have only modified the FOSC field option for use with the breadboard tutorials. The rest will be used later and covered in detail then, but for now the individual field options we saw in the configuration bits window can be seen to match their default states, being on or off or the modified option to fosc int osc. Each option is separated by an AND symbol. These options can be altered within the assembly file, but be aware any mistake in syntax will create errors during a build. The org directive hex0000 tells the assembler where to put the code in code memory. The address 0000 is the reset location. So after a reset, the code will run from address 0000 on power up. The next line of code has an instruction go to and a start label, which executes after a reset. The start label is found on the line of code after the org hex 0004 interrupt vector. So if a reset occurs, the code runs from address hex Double zero double zero runs to the go to label start, which then jumps to the following line of code, which is the start label and the code thereafter. This basically skips over the org directive hex triple zero four for the interrupt vector address. If there was interrupts used, then this is where the code would jump to address hex triple zero four and then subsequently execute code after this line. But for this tutorial, we will not be covering interrupts. So after a power up or reset, 
The code started at address hex 0000 and ran to the go to label which jumped to the start label shown on line 18. The initialization of the port is carried out next. The first is to set up the mode of the port pins, if digital or analog. For this tutorial, all pins will be set to digital. The bank cell directive selects the specific memory map bank number, which is bank number 3 for the Ansel A special function register. So this basically loads Ansel A file register address 18ch into the working register. This is then cleared to zero using the CLRF directive, which sets all Ansel A bits to zero, which puts all pins in digital mode. If bits are set to one, then they are set for analog mode, which is the default after a reset occurs for this PIC device. This is why the port pins need to be initialized correctly at the beginning before code can run. The port pins direction if input or output is set up next. This uses special function register tris a. A bit set to 1 is for inputs and 0 for output. This tutorial will set all pins to inputs but for pin RA2 as it needs to be an output to drive the LED on or off. The hex value will be 3B, which is triple zero zero double one binary. Only bit 2 or RA2 pin is set to zero. The bank cell directive selects the memory map bank for Tris A special function register. And the next line of code loads the literal value of hex 3B into the working register. The following line of code then moves this literal value held in the working register into the file register of Tris A, thereby setting the directions of the port pins to all digital inputs but for bit 2 or RA2 which has the bit value of 0 and is thus set to a digital output. The final few lines of code are to set initial bit values of port A. The data latch or let A register is used to read, modify and write to the port A bit values. The bank cell directive is again used to select the correct memory map bank for let A register. The literal value of hex 3B is also used to load into the working register the value of 111011 binary which is then moved from the working register to the file register of let A. The second bit or RA2 is then cleared to zero, which will turn the LED on when in circuit for syncing with the device's internal ground. The rest of port A bits are loaded with ones, but are not used in this tutorial. There is a preferred way to configure the unused pins, but this will be dealt with later. The assembly source file is ended with the last line of code with an end. The project's properties icon opens up a project's properties window, which can also be opened up by selecting the project from the project's window, right clicking and selecting project properties. From within the project's properties window, the categories section has the config default which provides information for the hardware tool and that the PICKIT 4 is selected for the project. The Compiler Tool Chain section confirms the MPASM Assembler version 5.81 is selected. If the PICKIT 4 is selected from the Category section and then from the Options for PICKIT 4 section, select Options Category Power from the drop down menu. From here, the Power Target Circuit from Picket 4 checkbox can be selected and the voltage level adjusted to the required 5 volts in the Apply and OK below. The code is complete and can be built and then programmed into the device and the LED will be turned on as soon as the device is run or debugged. The icon Build Project or F11 on the left 
and the Clean and Build project or Shift 11 can be used to assemble the project. This process should be successful with an output window confirming the build process completed. The Make and Program device icon is used to make the program, converting into a hex file, which is then programmed into the PIC device. A default warning pop up window is displayed asking to confirm the device installed is as selected for the project and is suitable for the set voltage. If a 3.3 volt device is installed and the picket 4 checks, the device may be damaged. The option to set up for low voltage is mentioned. Select yes as the PIC12 F1572 can handle the 5 volt supply. An output window presents the process and a successful programming of device if all is in order. If the Picket 4 power option had not been selected and the voltage not adjusted for 5 volts, then the output window mentions that the external supply has not been detected. So if the circuit and device is to be externally supplied, then this option to not select the Picket 4 to power is used and the external supply needs to be connected to the breadboard power rails and will be detected by the picket 4 and the programming will complete successfully. If the SNAP programmer is connected and MPLAB XIDE version 5.05 is run, the SNAP device will be detected as was the picket 4 if all drivers are correctly installed. From the project's properties window, the SNAP will be displayed in the hardware tools section and the tool chain can be confirmed. When making and programming the PIC device, the same output window message confirms the process and successful programming. Remember the SNAP programmer will need the external power supply connected to the breadboard and the power rails top and bottom positives connected and negatives connected in the same way. Here is a slightly modified version of the breadboard connections. I have added some color coded wires from the device's pins allowing the picket 4 to be connected neatly as seen, instead of the jumper wires being connected all over the device. The connections to the LED is extended to an area of the breadboard to allow the 14 and 20 pin devices to be installed without any routing wires moved. There is also a capacitor across the VDD and VSS pins, but we'll discuss this in later tutorials. The upper and lower power rails need to be connected as well, positive to positive and negative to negative, as we will not be using different voltage levels on the two sets of power rails. So the LED will basically be turned on as soon as the PIC device is programmed. This is a very basic tutorial, but a whole lot of information has been presented and will not be repeated in the following tutorials. This is also only the assembly part of the LED tutorial hence the naming EP5-1A LED. Thanks for watching. The next tutorial will cover the C, bare metal and MPLAB MCC formats and set the presentation format for the following tutorials for all five PIC devices for both the breadboard and development board series tutorials. Playlists for each device will become available and for each of the two series and then soon the Curiosity Nano tutorials will also start. Please leave a comment or suggestions to help improve the content. Like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates on videos as they become available. Check out available trailers for more about PIC Micro Tutorials software installations, breadboard connections, development board, Curiosity Nano. Here are some planned playlists and available in green.